Hello, my name is Andrea Clark and I'm currently curating an exhibition about Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots which will open at the British Library next year. We are really excited about the exhibition for it will be the first to consider these two iconic female rulers together, putting them both centre stage. As I continue to work from home on the exhibition, at a time when we're all focused on staying connected with family and friends and long to be able to enjoy their company, it's been really poignant to read the many letters that Mary sent to Elizabeth to request a personal meeting. For despite having been united many times on stage and screen, in real life the two women never actually met. Instead, their relationship was played out at a distance, much of it by letter. What I would like to do now is share with you three of these exceptional letters, all written in 1568 following Mary's deposition by her Scottish subjects and her flight over the English border. The first item really is a jewel beyond price in terms of its historical significance, for it is the very letter that Mary sent to Elizabeth to announce her arrival on English soil. Writing in her native French tongue and childlike handwriting, Mary describes the treasonable actions of her enemies, who have robbed me of everything I had in the world. And she expresses confidence in Elizabeth, not only for the safety of my life, but also to aid and assist me in my just quarrel. Mary's hope was not entirely misplaced, for since her return to Scotland in 1561 to take up direct rule following the death of her husband, the French King, she and Elizabeth had regularly exchanged letters full of sisterly affection. Describing herself as Elizabeth's very faithful and affectionate good sister, cousin and escape prisoner, Mary begs for an audience. I entreat you to send to fetch me as soon as you possibly can, for I am, she bemoans, in a pitiable condition, not only for a queen, but for a gentlewoman. For I have nothing in the world but what I had on my person when I made my escape, travelling 60 miles across the country the first day, and not having since ever ventured to proceed except by night, as I hope to declare before you if it pleases you to have pity, as I trust you will, upon my extreme misfortune. Mary's unexpected arrival plunged Elizabeth and her government into a political predicament that would last for 20 years. As her blood relative and fellow queen, Elizabeth was sympathetic to Mary's situation, but she was also acutely aware that her Catholic faith and strong claim to the English throne made her dangerous. On the advice of her chief minister, William Cecil, Elizabeth declined to meet Mary and instead placed her under temporary house arrest. Three months later, Mary wrote this friendly and rather charming note to her guard, Sir Francis Knowles, informing him of her intention to send a little token for his wife. Mary had been learning English under Noel's tuition, and this is the first letter that she penned in English. Continuing to press for a personal meeting with Elizabeth, Mary entreats Knowles to intercede with the Queen on her behalf. She promises to follow his counsel, but confesses that she is struggling to express her understanding in this language, and asks him to excuse my evil writing, for I never used it before and am hasted. In October 1568, Elizabeth set up a tribunal to investigate the reasons for Mary's deposition and to mediate between her and the Scottish rebels. But when the rebels presented a collection of love letters and sonnets known as the casket letters and allegedly penned by Mary to the Earl of Bothwell as evidence of her adultery and complicity in the murder of her second husband, Lord Darnley, Mary found herself on trial. She insisted the letters were forgeries and demanded a personal interview with the Queen, but Elizabeth declined to meet her until she had been cleared of all accusations and her reputation fully restored. And so Mary withdrew her representatives in protest. The letter that Elizabeth sent in response is fascinating, for although she had written to Mary in her own hand early on in their relationship as a sign of queenly sisterhood, she was now reluctant to do so, and this letter was written by a secretary. Elizabeth did, however, add her instantly recognisable and extravagantly flourished signature, and she still subscribed herself your good sister and cousin. Elizabeth assures Mary that the sorrow she had long felt for her mishaps and great troubles were now doubled by the appearance of the casket letters. Unable to reach a judgment without hearing Mary's version of events, Elizabeth urges her as one prince and near cousin regarding another, most earnestly as we may in terms of friendship, not to forbear from answering. Mary refused and in January 1569 the case against her was declared not proven. 
This inconclusive verdict would be used to justify Mary's continued imprisonment in England for the next 18 years. The British Library's exhibition will contain many more thrilling documents such as these, written in the Queen's own words and hands, which will enable visitors to step back into their world and to understand how from amicable beginnings and sisterly affection, their relationship turned into one of suspicion, distrust and betrayal.